It's time to harvest you. Let's nourish our mama joy by living big and loving bigger. I'm Aubrey. And I'm Teresa. And in this episode, we're talking about anxiety hangovers. Welcome to our podcast. Let's get started harvesting you. This podcast is sponsored by A2D, Addicted to Dance Company. Check us out on the web, a2dance.com. We're growing foundation, giving back to our community, and changing lives is our mission. I guess I have aggressive energy today. That's okay. I apologize for my aggressive... I think it's defensive because um, I feel stressed. So let's talk about that. What are you oh. stressed about today? This is a mama daily. It comes in ebbs and flows. Let me coach you today. Teresa, what do you feel stressed about? I feel a hangover stress. Now that's not like because I went out drinking last night or anything. It's that I was very stressed yesterday. My computer was driving me bonkers and it wasn't cooperating with me. I made a mistake and then it wouldn't allow me to fix it. And it was an endless loop of shut down, restart, try again, wait hours, shut down, restart, try again. It went on all day from 5 a.m. to about six or seven o'clock last night. So I was lucky that I have another computer I could work on so I could do some work. So if I couldn't have done any other work and just waiting for one computer, I would have lost my mind. But maybe that was the universe's way of telling you you needed a time out And we're not going to continue to work for you because we're trying to give you a mental break from this. You know, a funny thing is yesterday morning, I said to my husband, I'm very tired. I really should take a rest today. Like I should take an hour and close my eyes and rest. And instead, I decided to go into my home office and work. And then the chaos started. Mm. So if I had taken my own advice at the start of the day, listen, knowing that I to that mama gut, I did not listen to myself, and I just plowed through aggressively, and like it's going to work, but it's hard. It's so hard when, when I'm in the moment trying to get something to work, and I'm just like, there's a one thing I can do, and it will work. That one thing, and then I can't quite get the one thing to happen. It's knowing when to take a break, step back and try something else or just let it go for now and come back to it when I'm not as stressed. And when I did that, thank goodness, because my son came home from school and then I was talking to him about my problem with the computer and his solution was buy a new computer or delete all the files off your computer. Those were his big solutions. And I'm like, I can't do that because I have stuff on there I can't delete. And when I was talking with him, I was able to reset myself, and then it worked out. But until that happened, that's one of the problems about working alone and at home. And so many people have now experienced it with the pandemic is being at home alone and working and getting in that endless loop and not having anything to stop you if you're not stopping yourself from that, like... (sighs) Throwing in a load of laundry, coming back to work. Yes. Going and unloading the dishwasher, coming back to work. Yes. It is a constant loop. Having a cup of coffee or a glass of water or going for a walk around the block, too, just to free yourself from the building, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you need that. You need that time. You need that break. You need to consciously recognize things are not going as planned. And maybe that is a sign for you to say, I need to take a step back. Even though your brain may be saying, no, 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 I need to get this done. But your heart and your intuition and that mama gut is saying to you, Teresa, you need that time out. You didn't take it yesterday. You decided to push through. Mm. So now we're really going to make things difficult for you to tell you it's time for you to take a time out. That is so true because now I feel... Like I have a stress hangover. There's nothing that is causing me, you know, stress right now. There isn't something happening right now. But I have a hangover from it. Mm -hmm. So I'm vibrating a little bit. So I'm touching things like 
you know, just even with our soundboard and stuff, I, uh, touching extra buttons, I don't need to. I'm doing extra things I don't need to because I'm just like, I want to oversolve problems today. And that's going to lead to other problems because I have all this like anxious energy. Yes. And so what to do with that anxious energy? That go, is a, Go for a run. Yeah. Go for a run. Ride a bike. Take a walk. Do something to you. That that anxious energy that builds up in our brains. Like for me, it's, it's getting on my bike and running it out. It's not more for physical. It's more for mental. Getting rid of that and clearing space to allow goodness and to allow peace and to give yourself that ease that you deserve. And being a mama on top of that, your kid walks in at three o'clock or four o'clock and you have to reset, you don't have a choice. So everything kind of comes to a halt. And that's also a way of being like, okay, I need to go, I need to go left now. I need to get off of what I was so hyper-focused on that wasn't working out for me. And also your frequency levels are attracting that negative reaction. So the higher frequency you're on, especially when it comes to electronics and, and whatnot, if your energy is in a state of anxious and just, I got to get it done, I got to get it done, you're not going to get that like attraction, especially if you need a time out. So ah breathe do some breathing exercises if it's too cold out and you don't want to go for that run or that walk in the times we need it most meditation even if it's a 10 minute meditation turn on a guided meditation go to a different space in your house that you don't normally go to and just sit and close your eyes and follow the guided meditation and i swear it works every single time it just pours in like downloads of goodness and ease and self-love that we forget to give ourselves during these times when work gets busy or our plates are overflowing even though it's all good and joyful and it's fun stuff that we like to do you know we're adding to it every day and then we have the holidays around the corner so there's that anxiousness that we don't even recognize yet that is only a few weeks away, but is within distance that our body starts to go into that hyper focus mode on we have to get this done and I have to have a deadline. Yes. Yeah. The holidays bring it all in just it's hype. It's just hyper focused of everything because there are so many different things that are happening. So many demands, you know, we we feel like we need to get presence for everyone. We feel like we need to go to every party. We feel like we need to, you know, send out the holiday cards or whatever it is that we're doing, get our, you know, kids photo taken for the holidays. And then also celebrate and having all those special moments at home and with your family and then in-laws and friends. It's just a lot. And trying to juggle your regular work, your regular parenting, your regular chores, your regular everything. It can get overwhelming. And like you said, removing yourself, going to a different place in the house visually really helps me because I'm a visual person. For sure, me too. And if I'm seeing the same thing, I, I cannot reset very easily. I need to move myself, remove myself, go to a different place and have a little bit of quiet. And those first five minutes are hard. They are really hard. They are hard. really hard. It's like trying to give up sugar or coffee yep. or any other thing that you've tried to do. Like It is really hard to just be quiet for five minutes when like you're shaking and you have anxiety. I know it's just, it's a lot. But if getting through those first five minutes, then it starts to feel good. Then the, re like, then the centering can start to happen. But got to stick with it. You got to yes. believe in your ability to get through it as yep. well. Like you can do it. And to recenter. Yeah. So how about a to-do list? Do you make yourself a to-do list of these are the things I want to get done today. Here's what Monday <laughs> looks like. Here's what Tuesday looks like. No. I do. I make so many lists. Okay. And my lists have lists. And I have electronic lists. I have sticky note lists. I have paper lists. So I you have an have abundance lists in my calendar. of lists. Because my, one of my things is, is that I'm an explosion of 
ideas and wanting to get things done. And everyone who's ever been around me and worked with me knows that I have another idea and I have another idea and I have another idea. The thing is, is staying on top of what is important. What are the three things I know I can do today? Because the list can get out of control. I'm mindful of it, but I still yet go through that loop of list, list, list. And then I don't get everything done and I move it on to, you know, oh, I'll get to it someday. Someday. So what if you have two notebooks and it's a today notebook and it's a creative someday notebook. Here are some super awesome, I, my ideas notebook and here's my like priority notebook. This is what I need to do today. This is the amount of time I'm going to do it and schedule in that 15 minute meditation, especially if the first five minutes is really hard. 10 minutes is too short. So up it to 15 or 20 minutes and schedule it in. Just like being a mama and staying at home or working from home is important to schedule lunch. How many times do you forget to eat? That's so true. That is so true. And and I have worked from home for years and years. And when my son was home during when they had virtual school, I ate lunch with him every day and made a point to eat lunch with him every day. Now, he's old enough to make his own lunch, and he can do that all on his own, but I made a point to make that a priority that I got to spend that half hour with him, and that was a great habit. And now that habit has just disappeared. The routine is gone. It's just disappeared because there isn't that other person to tend to. Yes. So you need to make a routine for you. So your, your today... Your, your Wednesday to-do list. And this is what I'm going to get on Wednesday. And if I have time to do the extras, here's the other book with all the extras. This is... Bonus oh. content. Yeah. <laughs> the, the bonus. I think of it as like, if I get every... I do. I think of everything I get done. Then I, then I go and look at those other lists and say, okay... You know, I haven't finished, you know, renewing our passports and I haven't finished doing this and that. And those are things I don't have to do today. Mm -hmm. But I try to make it so that there are goals for the week, too. Sure. And those kinds of things fall in goals for the week. So bigger things. But it's really hard. It's really hard to edit that list down to a couple of things each week and each day. It really, the editing part for me, I wish there was 50, 60 hours in a day. Mm. That's really hard to. But we all have the same amount of time in the day. I know. So we have to find the time to do that extra self-love that's going to propel us to the next day. And it takes discipline. It takes discipline to make a list and say, I'm only going to do this and I'm going to leave space for me. I'm going to leave an hour and a half for whatever I want to do in that hour and a half, whether it is I'm going to go fold the laundry, which isn't a fun job, but it's something that needs to be done, or I'm going to put my head down and take a nap because I have a hangover from an anxiety full weekend and it's also being super super mindful of each thought that comes up so it sounds like you have and I know a lot of mamas deal with this is you have like 300 internet tabs open in your brain at one time Mm. and you're not sure which one and you're jumping and you're bouncing around but here's the thing if you are trying to juggle two things at one time you can't intentionally focus on each thing because you're not giving each thing a hundred percent of you. So if you're going to do one project and then make space and time for the next project, then you're a hundred percent giving your intentional and purposeful value of who you are to that content and to that project. But if you're jumping and I, I am one to have done this many times, I'll jump from something with A2D and then I'll jump from, uh, I have to order something for school, a list, an email that I just remembered. Oh, let me jump to that. And then let me jump back to this. But then I lost my focus and, and what my, I, I had so much drive and love in that content I was creating. It just, whoop, because my frequency level dropped because I got pulled off to the right. So it's really 
just narrowing down I feel like another really good tool that I have I have dedicated religiously to over the years is taking extra time in the morning. And I know you're an early morning person like I am. I get up at 5 a.m. I have my time. And I like to journal. I like to write down things that are on my mind. I do a gratitude list every day, even as simple as the cup of coffee that's in your hand. You know, just trying to lean in and find gratitude for what is working. And when things aren't working, like your computer all day yesterday, recognize, okay, this isn't working, but what is working right now in my life? Mm. What is working? And lean into those things that are working and walk away from the things that aren't because the universe is trying to redirect you. Yes. And it doesn't mean you have to walk away forever no, from that thing. just in that moment. Yeah. Come back to it later. And if it's still not working, you're being redirected. Detours are God's way of putting us in the right direction. So in, instead of climbing up that hill that you're just, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm never going to get through it. I just want to throw my computer across the room because it's not working for me. Walk away. Yes. And it's a discipline. It's hard because you're like, no, I know I can do this. I know I can fix this. This is what I do for a living. I know I can get in there and I can, sometimes you got to walk away. Yes. I, I, I did walk away a couple of times yesterday and then I'd come back and the computer had just shut down or was restart. It was doing its own thing. Like it was its own being yesterday uh -huh. and making its own choices. Had its own mind. Yes. And yeah. it didn't want me messing with it at all. It just didn't. And I kept going. I, I wasn't giving it enough space and I wasn't resting like I needed to. Yes. I said I needed to rest. I didn't. So my computer said you were going to. Yes. Yes. And I did not. You fought it. I fought it, and now you're paying I, for it. I'm paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> but we, that's with every confrontation, though, in life. Is that when you know? Is it worth having this confrontation? Because the hangover from a confrontation, it's a lot. I mean, some some people might like call friends or post something on Facebook or Twitter about an interaction that was you know a lot to try to get it off, try to like relieve that hangover. But I don't usually do that kind of thing, so I usually just keep, keep it. Keep it in. I keep it. Because so I don't want to burden other people with okay, my stress. Then, then write about it. Yes. And what's the lesson? What is my lesson? What was the lesson in this so it doesn't happen again? I needed to listen to myself when I said I, I am tired. I needed to listen to what I needed and I didn't do that. That right. was my first and that what, was my first detour. And then I just kept taking detours. And, yes. Yeah. So you've learned the lesson. So you don't repeat it again. Or you now, recognize the I lesson. I recognize the lesson and I know that I will make mistakes because I make mistakes. Absolutely. We're but human. I'm, but I'm going to be better at recognizing it and listening to myself. I need a rest. I need to take a half hour. And it probably would have gone a different way. Yes. I don't know if it would have worked. It would have cleared some space. It would have changed your frequency yes. levels. It would have adjusted your energy and your attitude with the computer. So next time this happens, what will what will you recognize first? What will be the first thing to come to head of you at like to come to the forefront of your brain? I've been here before. I've been here before and, and I, what didn't work. Yes. Don't do what did so you did before. So let's do yeah. what will work. What yes, what may work cuz what I did before was not the yes. not the thing. Just not the thing. And the other thing is when you're in it like mamas, when you're in it, when you're really in it, what is the worst that can happen if you walk away? What's the worst thing that can happen? Unless, you know, there's someone bleeding or right. there's a, like a like a, an emergency. actual emergency, it's okay to walk away. You know, the dishes, laundry, computer. Yep. Um, and, you know, the phone call you have to have with someone, you know, you can reschedule it. You can, re you can reschedule, you can readjust most things in life. And it's okay to do that. Most people understand. Yes. 
because most everyone else has the same thing. Yes. I think we set ourselves at such high expectations sometimes as mamas because we are the head of the family, the head of the household, and we try to make sure everything is just right for everyone. Like I am super, my, I have a very fixed mindset about having the beds made. I do too. It is something that I like the doors open and the beds made. So guess what? Instead of constantly being on my kids for ma- not making their beds and me end up getting frustrated about it, I said, I'm going to make your beds during the week. You make your beds on the weekends. That's a really good deal. There's a compromise. I know you feel rushed in the morning and I'm super anxious because your bed's not made. I don't want to be super anxious anymore. So I'm just going to willingly make the bed. And then on the weekends, whenever you get up, make your bed. I like that. Because I I have that same frustration. I like, there's something about at least pulling up all the covers and making them neat. Yes. You know, at least doing that effort. Because it just feels... There's just something about it, and I don't know exactly what it is, but it feels off to me. It doesn't feel welcoming. The bedroom doesn't feel like you're ready for the day. It doesn't feel, there's, there's like, it's It's just clutter. And when there's clutter, there's clutter in your brain and in your mind. Mm -hmm. And your kids walk away and go to school, but you're, you're home and you see that clutter. And that adds to clutter in my brain I don't like. It's just like having a closet that is a hot Mm -hmm. mess. Or a car that is a hot mess, that is how you're feeling inside. So if you allow things to unravel in your home and in your car and in your space, your office, your work, that is a reflection of how you feel inside. The kids don't quite get that yet, right? Because they're young and they're in a rush and they're teenagers and they're coming and they're going. But giving them that teaching moment of I'm still going to hold you responsible for making your bed because it's an important, it's an important lesson. Get up and make your bed. So we we made a deal. Well, it's just like getting up and getting dressed too and wearing outside clothes. Yes. Instead of wearing, you know, even if you work at home, wearing pajamas and slippers and everything. I always feel like I'm ready for work. Even at home, yes. if I'm wearing clothes Dressed. that I can walk out the door in and I feel comfortable and I feel confident in myself because that translates into the work that I do. Yes, and it translates it, it's into the work you do, the people you meet, the relationships you have, the, you know, seeing a stranger at the store, and just because you feel like feeling good. And I'm ready for opportunity. That's the other thing about it is that... It's like being prepared in anything else in life, having the skills, you know, getting the education that you need, the training to have the job that you want or whatever it is that you desire is being prepared for when opportunity comes along. Because if someone called me and said, hey, you want to go meet me for coffee in 20 minutes, I can say, yes, I'm ready. I can leave the house now. I am ready for whatever is going to happen. And if somebody says they want to, you know, do one of those Zoom meetings spontaneously yeah. with me. Like it was going to be a phone call, but now it's going to be a video thing. Like, I'm ready oh, no. for it. I don't have to be frantic saying, oh, I have to comb my hair. Like right. put on something that doesn't have stains on yeah. it. You know, just like be all ready for whatever might happen. Otherwise, I have to resist those things because I don't want to present myself in a non-professional way if it's something to do with work. So And beyond those layers... By getting dressed in the morning, by doing your hair, by by being presentable, you're showing up for yourself. That's so true. Like, number one, you look in the mirror and you're like, I feel good. I look good. I did my hair today. I feel confident. It fills you. It does. And really, starting the day, you know, I'm still in a version a workout version of my pajamas in the morning when my kids are off to school. And then once they're gone, I can fill my bucket a little more. Because there's that hour of, it could be chaos, depending on my mood, or it it could be great. Yeah, getting 
starting your day in a, a certain direction really does lead you to, you know, a, like I said, opportunity. But it also, it prepares you. And I always say in the morning, I look like me now. Like, I feel like me, and so I can then like listen to me then I can act like me so I feel like more like myself mm -hmm. when I'm ready for the day there's just something about it that you know, switches from oh let's be cozy and snuggly and sleep yep. and all that stuff into yes I'm ready for the world hello world I'm here let's do this so that brings me to that just triggered me to think about after work mm slipping out of clothes and into pajamas. Mm. So my household, besides me and my son, my husband and my daughter have a very hard time getting into pajamas. And I say, you're training your body and your brain when you get into those comfy clothes, when you get into those sweatpants and that shirt to start to wind down. Yes. If you're still sitting in the, on the couch in jeans at seven o'clock at night, and you're getting ready for bed to go climb in bed at 8.30 or 9 o'clock, you're not fully giving your body, your mind, your heart, your soul, your skin, the cues, it's time to wind down. Mm. Just like in the morning, you hop in the shower and it's time to wake up and you get dressed for the day and you pick out your clothes or you put your uniform on, whatever it may be. So it's all coming back to that level of giving yourself these little tiny tools that can change your mindset and can change your your whole day. And those moments do give you that that sense of pause too. It does give me pause when I'm, you know, getting clothes out for the morning or transitioning into wearing because I I change my clothes to go to bed, but like beforehand, like an hour or so beforehand, so that I can read, so I can hang out with my kids, so I can hang out with my husband, we can watch a show, whatever it is. Yeah. But it's different than daytime yeah. stuff. But in the transition moments, those are the moments where I can, where I usually, I didn't do this yesterday, listen to myself. Because no matter what's planned, what we have planned to do for the morning, the day, the evening, whatever it is, if my heart's not in it, my mind's somewhere else, Dang. then I can, I, can, I can sense that at that time. And I'm not busy and distracted by putting food on the table for dinner or thinking about pre you know, preparing you know, my kids' lunch for the next day or you know, feeding the cats or scooping litter, whatever the thing is that I'm doing. I'm not distracted. I'm focused on me for those five minutes. And that doesn't happen a lot in a mama's life is that where you get, where we get like, where we get that time just built into the day instead of building it into the day. And once you can do that, then you can build the time into the day, which I swear every day that I do do meditation and I do my yoga and some days I skip it because I feel like I don't really need it today and I, I have so mm. much to do is a bad choice I'm always more productive mm -hmm. I'm always calmer I'm much easier to deal with stress I didn't do it yesterday that was another mistake I made but I'm always better prepared I'm more open to things I'm more receptive I notice more things uh, it's the world is more, I feel more part and connected to the world when I take that time. You're in alignment. Yes. So the more we practice, the more we can stay in alignment, mind, body, soul, physically, mentally, spiritually, to step into the best version of ourselves in that moment with that project, with our children, with our husband, whatever is in front of us. So the more we practice, the more we are able to stay in alignment. And when we think we don't need the practice, then we get out of practice and we fall off of alignment and then it unravels. And yes. guess what? It happens to all of us. It happens to all of us because sometimes life takes over. If your child is sick, if you are sick, right? Clearly, we're not going to take a run or ride our bike or do yoga if we're in bed and not feeling well. Well, that's also, it's time for a timeout. Mm -hmm. But we can recognize that and there are other ways we can do to, to get that self-love and that practice. We can read, we can listen to a podcast, we can 
uh, do a guided meditation while laying in bed. We can watch something. We can do something different that we don't have time to do that's not built into our day. But being in alignment is truly a, a personal development, self-growth journey that takes time practice and patience yes it's not something that happens overnight it is not something where it's like okay i'm feeling good right now because i've been doing this for six days try it for six weeks seven days a week and make sure it sticks change the fixed mindset change the the oh my gosh i'm having this overload again it doesn't mean that anxiety won't creep in but it means you can recognize it and redirect it and choose again and it doesn't necessarily have to be meditation it just that's just something that works for us yes but it can just be being quiet and being still it can be journaling it can be you know a way of checking in with yourself but I've found that if I attach it to something else, so attach it to when I wake up in the morning or attach it to before lunch or attach it to becomes a routine when I'm changing yeah. my clothes for bed, you know, then it's easier to make it a part of a routine if it's part of something that you know you're doing anyway, like brushing your teeth, you know, you know, checking in with yourself and having those those moments, whether it's meditation or something else. But making it, making it easier to be a routine when it's with something, it sure. can be like its partner in your day. Because I know when I'm alone all day by myself sometimes that the hours, the time doesn't really, I don't really recognize that, you know, it's noon. I, maybe I should eat lunch or it's whatever time. The only times that really stand out for me are drive my kid to school. My kid's coming home from school. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, you know, and that's really, that, those are really the strongest points in every day. Now, what I do every day is different. I might not be in my home office. I might be, you know, working on a project with my husband. I might be somewhere else. But, um, but I know that I eat, and I know that I change my clothes for bed and get dressed in the morning. Whether that time is at 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock, it doesn't really matter. But attaching it to that activity really does, really has helped me in carving out that space and making it be almost a habit. But then I ignore it. I, when actively ignoring that is just such a, you know, I'm not, I'm not better than my energy. My energy needs to be nourished. My energy needs... Mm -hmm its own thing and my brain you know it'll try to override it yeah yeah so it's kind of watering the seeds yeah that you've planted before and going back in and grabbing them yeah I mom and's not easy no. and we don't have to be perfect we just have to show up as our best self that day the best self that we see ourselves not the best self that someone else sees you you're not you're not on this journey or in this life to impress anybody else. You're here to show up for you, show up for your family, serve humanity in little bits as giving kindness, showing kindness, doing different acts of kindness, volunteering, getting your kids involved in, in giving them that experience and helping them mindfully go through their day so they don't have to experience the 300 internet tabs open at one time and not sure which one to choose. No, because that is not a good feeling. That is so unsettling. Yeah. And the more that the more that we give to other people, the more that we're present, it it just always feels better than even like the best chocolate cake in the world. Yep. Leaning it really into does. What feels good. It really does. What feels good. What feels good. What feels good. <laughs> over and over. It could be you know, giving, uh, writing, journaling, meditating. For me, when it comes to meditation, I've just really found that that truly is the bridge. It truly is the bridge from where I am today to who I want to be tomorrow in little bits. And meditation is hard because no one wants to have to sit with themselves. 
especially on this side of the country, we run and run and run and run. And it's interesting because I have family that lives in Florida and their way and their motion is just so much more relaxed. Yeah. And maybe it's because of the sun and it slows you down and it's hot, but it's just so much, their mind, they're just more mindful, it seems even. And I'm sure there are, there are Floridians that have a million internet tabs open in their head at the same time, but life just, at least from the Upper East Coast yes. looks more simple. So we can turn this around and say, keep it super simple. And when things aren't working, just have a couple little tools of, okay, this isn't working. I'll try again. Let me try again. Maybe it's something, but if you keep trying and trying, you need to back off and take some, some time for some self-love. Yeah. One thing I always tried, try to do, which I didn't do until the end of yesterday, is say to myself, okay, if your friend had the same situation, what would you tell them to do? And then I try to take that advice that I would give someone else, which is way better That's than the decisions that I'd be making for myself without yes. using that as a, like a... I mean, it sounds a little crazy, but I'm talking to myself as if I'm not myself to give myself advice. Advice. And so that much is better. So not crazy. Because I don't, because I don't actually, that's better to, for me than trying to think of the thought on my own. Yes. Do you know what I mean? I absolutely do. So <laughs> my husband, every once in a while, has written right here on his hand, WWAD. And I can't tell you how many people, even his chiropractor was like, um, is that what would Aubrey do? And and we just start laughing. And he's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> and sometimes I'll write it with magic marker, like permanent marker. I'm like, okay, you're having one of those days. So just come from, from my mindset. How would I <laughs> approach this? And it, yeah. he just laughs. But then again, as he's driving on a steering wheel, he's like, okay. It's like a redirect. So that's yeah. a great, that's, that's the a same great thing. tool. Yeah, this is the like same, same yeah. thing. John and I are in the same boat right yeah. there. You that's know. so funny. And what? But it's such a great tool. It's yeah. like, okay, think about someone in your tribe or someone in your village that if you were talking to them, what, what advice would they give you in this moment? And time out. Okay, let me, let me think about what that would be. And let yeah. me go in that direction. Yes. Yeah, as otherwise, I mean, it sounds crazy to give yourself advice, but it's even crazier to just spin out of control on your yeah. own, too. So, Well, no, we have to be our own friend. We need to have a relationship with ourselves. We need to have that open line of communication, of talking to ourselves and knowing our wants and our needs and how we want this day to go. And if things aren't working, okay. What, what am I telling myself? What is my intuition speaking to me? Lay down, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> so true. And I feel better. I'm not, like, vibrating anymore. That's good because you're talking it out. Yes. You're getting that anxious energy out. And it, that and anxious energy is a real thing. And mamas, I can't tell you enough. Like, I, I, I mean, I think Teresa and I both have... We use exercise as, as getting out the anxious energy. Like when I jump on that bike, it, something shifts in my mental state if I'm having anxious energy, even if it's for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. It, even stretching, even just doing a couple of simple stretches, it really does. It it changes, it, it just, it switches and, things. And when you're having that anxious energy, it's really important to pain point it where in your body do you feel it like where in your body you said your cells are vibrating yeah so where in your body did you feel it oh. my back okay mm -hmm. so maybe you are holding it so that's your root chakra oh and my well I have a bad back but then I was having like these little like um I actually had to put heat on it because I was having like so much tension in my back that I went out of my way to get a heating pad to put on my back, but I didn't stop what I was doing. So right. I was just like mm -hmm. making it worse. So that is your body shooting you signals. Okay, the universe already tried to send you signals <laughs> with the computer and clearly, so now your physical body is saying, 
you need to stop, recognize it, but you kept going. So mamas, these are, these are great conversations and really important cues. Listen to your body. Always listen to your body. If you are running kids from sport to sport to sport to sport, or you are just finding you are mentally drained and exhausted, sit down, write out what your life's like, and really look at, do I need to be doing all these things in one day? Do we need to squeeze all this in? Is there any room to not have my kid doing, you know, running from dance to basketball to piano class? Can we spread some things out? Or, you know, maybe take the different seasons and do this season basketball and next season piano and next season dance because it's a lot and it's a lot on the mom yeah. it's a lot on the the family unit the driving the the splitting you know we we you know split to take one to the barn and and one to here and we miss that time I make sure to build in that time. Okay, we're having dinner this day, this time, sitting down. Because now, since the pandemic, and we don't have that one-on-one mm. so much, we have to build it back in. Yes. And yeah. that is so valuable and so important, not just to filling you up, but filling everybody up and being at the dinner table and being able to look in each other's eyes and say, how was your day? What was the best part of your day? What are you thankful for today? This is what I'm thankful for today. Yes. And then thinking you can do that later. Yeah, the later is not. No. no. All we have is now. Yes. We have right now. Right now, mamas. I remember when my kids were two and three going, oh, my gosh, I can't wait till they can tie their own shoes. And then all of a sudden they could tie their own shoes. And then I couldn't wait until they were more self-sufficient. And now they are, I have a preteen and a teenager that they need their space. So don't wish away your days. Really enjoy the molding, the, 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 the shaping, everything that's happening because we're growing too. Yeah. And we forget that. Well, I think that's the end of this episode. Thank you for sharing this time with us. We would love to hear from you and support your harvesting mission in your personal life. Share your thoughts, questions, ideas with us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Harvesting You or visit our website, HarvestingYou.com. Until next time, let's put inspiration into intentional action and keep harvesting you. You.